West Coast winter weather is getting worse and worse. More snow, more rain, more wind than ever. I'm going on a backcountry skiing and climbing adventure in British Columbia to test myself against these elements. But it could be BC Wilderness 1, Storm Chaser 0. That is not good. Okay, Mom, if you're watching, turn off the TV. Like most places in Canada, the West Coast gets some pretty crazy weather. But British Columbia's unique geography can produce extreme winter climates. Out here in February, you could be sun tanning, surfing, skiing, or digging out of a major blizzard. Sandwiched between the Rocky Mountains and the Pacific Ocean, BC gets hit with radically different weather systems from all directions. David Jones of Environment Canada explains. There's a number of different types of storms that really affect coastal BC. The first one, coastal lows. These are intense low pressure systems that sweep in off the Pacific. They create enormous wind damage. Last year's storms through Stanley Parks, those were coastal lows. There's also the Arctic blast, that is the Arctic air mass that sweeps onto the coast, brings incredible wind chills, incredible winds, and extremely bitterly cold Arctic air. Another storm that really has a huge impact in the winter here is the so-called Pineapple Express. These storms linger for two or three days. They're super high moisture content and they produce enormous rainfalls. When we get a Pineapple Express early in the season, it often results in a nasty season of avalanches here on the coast and in the interior of BC. The extreme environment here creates the conditions for some pretty unique adventures, like climbing up a waterfall. I'm going to climb with international mountain guide, Jörg Wiltz. This is a great spot. I'm going to learn how to scale this 60 meter popsicle. These ice climbers are a special breed of crazy. And wait a minute, I'm actually about to join their ranks. I've climbed all kinds of things in my travels, but nothing quite like this. Climb on. Step on up straight and then bridge out a little bit. Yep. Ugh. My tools are getting stuck. There we go. And swing the tool with a long arm. Yeah. That's the stuff. Not only are you pulling your weight up the cliff, but swinging these ice axes over your head gets tiring very quickly. And when you get tired, you make mistakes. Had it not been for the safety rigging and my guide's quick reflexes, this could have been bad. I'm 
now pretty much exhausted, but I keep going. Even with the fall, I managed to survive the climb without a scratch. Well, almost. The best way to experience the weather out west is to head into the back country. But to get there, you need a lot of knowledge. And you need a lot of stuff. So you want the weight distribution in a backpack is you want to keep it relatively light on the bottom. So Dave not, Schubert has a lifetime of experience like traveling in the harsh conditions of the Rockies. If this is your back here, you sort of want the weight going up like this. Mm. So you start shallow and comes up. He's also the biggest um, gearhead I've ever met, uh, next to me. Yeah. So I got you these with a bunch of different pre-made backcountry stuff. My special vest. The coolest technology is the ski equipment for this journey. There are no chairlifts where we're going, so you have to be able to ski uphill. And there's a surprisingly simple way to do it. These are ski skins. And the concept is they stick to the bottom of your skis, and it's kind of like a one-way sort of material. Get the bubbles out. It's kind of like the skin on a shark. Smooth in one direction, but rough in the other direction. All right, looking forward to giving it a shot. Tomorrow, I find out if I can keep up with the seasoned pros in the wilds of BC. I'm about to head out on my backcountry ski trip. When you decide to go skiing beyond the confines of the chairlifts, you have a few choices of how to get there. This is one option. If you like to take the easy way, many adventure tourists are using heliskiing to get to the virgin powder high up on the mountains. This would definitely be an effortless way to get where I'm going. But I'm always up for a challenge. This is not a trip you want to do alone, so I teamed up with some of the best wilderness skiers around. Martin Fitchell and Brian Jones from Canada West Mountain Schools are joining me, and I'm relying on their expertise to keep us safe. Quick check of the map, and we're all set. All right, looks good. Time to hit the trail. You know, when you think of skiing, most people think of, you know, going downhill on skis. But with these type of skis and the skins on the bottom, it's actually possible and quite easy to go up these hills. Who would have guessed? But what goes up must eventually come down. Did I mention that this is only my second time skiing? You know the old saying, if you fall off the horse, get right back on again. So you can fall right back off again. My greenhorn ski technique is already causing me problems. I got these new boots that I've never used before and they're already starting to chew up my ankle. If I don't deal with it now, it'll become a problem later. George, just for 
general comfort is your long john and your, your fleece pants, just pull all of that up so that there's just a liner sock and then the boot. So there's, there isn't uh, many layers in there to bunch up. It's all about your feet, taking care of your feet. Temperature regulation and foot comfort. If you can keep those two things in order, you can survive just about anything. When you're on skis and carrying a 20 kilo pack, everything is a struggle. Oh, another troll spot. And the trails out here aren't exactly machine groomed. These are some of the most demanding hiking conditions I've ever experienced. You have heard of a chairlift, right? So we've been climbing now for about six hours with these skis up the side of this mountain, and it's just getting tougher and tougher. I'm not used to being the weak link on any of these trips, and it's not a position that I'm accustomed to or enjoying right now. It's uh, a lot harder than I was expecting it to be. I'm working muscles that I haven't even known existed for years. Oh, I'm gonna try and push on some further. There's a beautiful area. It's about another hour left till base camp, but I don't want to linger here long. You can see there's these sloughs there's been little avalanches here and you can see where snow is rolling down. So this is a bit of a trap, this area here. So time to keep moving. Well, this looks like as flat a spot as any. After today's workout, I'm actually looking forward to laying down in this pile of snow. Once I get settled in, I assess my battle wounds. That is not good. Look at the blister on my shin. Oh, that hurts. And both of them are like that. Uh, it's gonna be tough getting out of here too. It's, there might be some weather coming in and it's another 11 kilometers to get out of here. Now, luckily most of it is downhill Gonna get some rest and then hit the trail tomorrow. After a few days of backcountry skiing in the Coast Mountains, I'm starting to realize how much conditioning is necessary to do this. My body feels like I've been hit by a truck. And the frigid nighttime conditions make sleeping difficult. Just to give you an idea of how cold it was here last night, there's hoar frost all over my ski equipment. You can get a layer of this frost all over everything. And then if you get a dump of snow on top of that, that layer of frost has actually become a weak layer. And it can actually be the spot where avalanches break and a slab will come down the mountain. So, as long as it doesn't snow, on top of this stuff, we'll be okay. That's the theory, anyway. There we are. After a bit of breakfast, it's time to pack up and make the push for home. As always, everyone wears their avalanche beacons. There you go. You are transmitting. I am mentally prepared for the ski out, and that's what really counts. There will be extreme physical hardship, but that which doesn't kill you makes you a bitter, old, cranky man.
Although today's weather is great for skiing, these conditions are a cause for concern. Now, it's not too often that I go out and enjoy beautiful blue sky days. Usually I'm interested in things that are more tempestuous and stormy, but just because it's nice out doesn't mean that there isn't danger here. The changing weather conditions, the snowpack, they can all lead to an avalanche danger. So what we need to do next is evaluate the snow and see exactly what type of danger there is. So let's test the snow here. That would be the ground. We got 295 centimeters. Brian is trained in snow profiling. That's getting a little bit. There we go, I'm a meter 10. A series of tests designed to determine how likely avalanches are in the current conditions. And I'd now like to check the interfaces for their strengths. Okay. I'm just going to start with some light taps. And what I'm looking for, there we go, look at that. But you'll see some very low density layers at that interface. Generally, that's not the type of interface we like to have in the snowpack when we're on steep terrain. So there's a bit of a cause for concern. We plan the safest route down. Now it's time to try and redeem myself. So I'm about to go uh, skiing down this uh, slope here. What's the number one rule when it comes to Skiing through trees. Skiing through trees, George, number one rule, don't look at the trees. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. Of course, the boys have to show me up. There we go, made it down to the river. It's only about another two kilometers. But there's a lot more to West Coast winters oh. than snow and ice. I've found a place with huge waves, crazy winter surfers, and something called the blowhole. Two most dominant influences on West Coast winter weather are the mountains and the Pacific Ocean. While the mountains are home to the massive snowpacks that delight skiers, there's another BC hotspot for extreme weather lovers. In a remote coastal town, about five hours drive from Vancouver, powerful ocean weather systems create a storm chaser's heaven. Snow isn't the only kind of winter weather that British Columbia is known for. Here on the west coast of Vancouver Island in Tofino, the Wiccan Inish Inn is a hotel that specializes in winter storm watching. People can come here from all over the world and watch the incredible waves crash into the shore. With wind speeds often topping 80 kilometers per hour and plenty of rocky shoreline, big, dramatic waves are common here. But the crazy thing is, it's not just the winter storm watchers that flock here. Surfing is a popular pastime here in Tofino, but it takes a real diehard to do it at this time of the year. Did I mention that it's February in Canada? It may seem a little nuts to brave the frigid ocean waters for your sport, but BC surfers are passionate about this unique area. The advantage of surfing in Canada, I think, is that there's so few of us out here. Um, the waves, it's not that crowded. It's a tight community. It's a small town. We all know each other. This is Tofino. 
and it's my heaven and I surf every day. You have the right equipment, you stay warm. It's pretty magical here. <laughs> There's another magical spot in Tofino, hidden away, out of sight. It's called the blowhole. It's not easy to get to, but it's worth the hike. <laughs> this must be the place. Oh, yeah, this has got to be the place. Wow. Amazing. Well, I found the mysterious blowhole. It's a spot here down by the ocean where the water comes rushing in, gets squeezed between these rocks, and then has nowhere to go but up. explodes up like a geyser. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> you can imagine what a dangerous place this would be during a big Pacific storm. few years, the west coast of Canada has witnessed record-breaking weather events with increasing frequency. While the exceptional amounts of snow, rain, and wind are a boon to storm chasers, they're a cause for concern for climate scientists. Are these weather patterns the early effects of global warming? We can't attribute any storm, any series of storms, any season, any year to climate change. You have to really look at the broader picture, the longer time period. But we do know the climate's changing, and the experts have told us that we can expect more frequent and more intense weather systems. Sure seems like we've seen a lot of those in the last few years here. <laughs> 